All right, this is it. Monday's big announcement. What have you got for me, Tim Cook? Good morning. There's Apple Music, which has over 90 million songs and 30,000 curated playlists in its global catalog. What else you got? And one of the best ways to experience it is with HomePod Mini. Yeah, next. AirPods deliver a magical wireless experience. Come on, you know what I want to see. Now, let's talk about the Mac. Okay, now you've got my attention. That's it. The next big update to the MacBook line is here. And they went one step further in their quest to dominate the personal computing market. But just like Apple, I'm gonna cover the, uh, <clears throat> the other important news first. Apple Music got a new subscription plan that's half the price, but you can only use Siri to access it. A HomePod Mini is the same as before, but now has colors. AirPods are better. And I realize there's people out there that were really excited for AirPods to come out. I can't use them, they don't stick in my ear, so I'm happy for those people who wanted to get those. But really, let's talk about the MacBook Pro. MacBook Pros came out and they have really taken the lead when it comes to performance versus efficiency. Before I suggest which MacBook is best for what kind of customer, I wanna make it clear what this whole lineup is because it's not especially clear from the keynote. Here's how it breaks down. So branding wise, there are two major titles for the MacBook Pro processors, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The M1 Pro can come with 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, the M1 Max can have 32 or 64. The M1 Pro comes in three basic configurations. An 8-core CPU with a 14-core GPU, a 10-core CPU with a 14-core GPU, and a 10-core CPU with a 16-core GPU. The 10-core CPU and the 16-core GPU are the one that they mentioned in the keynote. The M1 Max has a 10-core CPU and 24-core GPU configuration and a 10-core CPU, 32-core GPU configuration. This is also the one that they mentioned in the keynote. They didn't really talk about the 24-core GPU option. The two lower-end configurations only come in the 14-inch size. The other three configurations can come in 14 or 16-inch sizes. All models can have a 512GB, 1TB, 2TB, 4TB, or 8TB SSD, and all come in silver or space gray. I did the math on that, and that turns out to be 160 different potential combinations, by the way. So who should buy this, right? They made it very clear with the people that they featured that this is really for people who are doing video editing or 3D graphics or coding, game development. This isn't for the average user, unless you've got a lot of money to burn, right? If you're an average user that wants to do even basic video editing, even decent 4K video editing, the M1 on the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro 13 inch is a better option because you're just gonna save a bundle. You're not gonna really see the advantage of having this super powerful machine. But if you do cross that line, my general strategy is to stick with either a great price or a future-proof high-end product. So I tend to recommend moving towards either the high-end range or the cheapest you can get that's still pro. So if you go for the cheapest, you're gonna get the eight core CPU and 14 core GPU M1 Pro. That'll run about $2,000 depending on what size SSD you get. If you're gonna go for performance, I'd go for the high end M1 Max. That's the 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and at 512 gigabytes SSD, that'll start at about 3,500 for the 14 inch and 3,700 for the 16 inch because it's about $200 more depending on your configuration to go from 14 inch to 16 inch. Even the lowest end, even the M1, is able to do some pretty impressive prosumer work. The biggest question is, what do you need? Figure out what you really need and then find the computer that's appropriate to meet those needs. The thing I'm kind of excited about with this whole announcement isn't so much what they announced today, it's what they will announce in the future. When they first announced the M1, myself and others were thinking, where is this gonna go? What if they were to put a lot more power behind this? And this week they gave us a glimpse at that answer. All of the benchmarks that they showed capped the power usage for these M1 
Pro and Max processors at about 50 to 60 watts, which is what a battery in a laptop would be able to produce. So the real question is, what happens when they put it into something that plugs into the wall, like a Mac Mini or a Mac Pro, maybe even an iMac, but really a Mac Pro? How powerful will it be if they're not constrained by some kind of 50 watt limit? That's gonna be really interesting to see. So I hope this gave you a quick framework to think about how MacBook Pros are laid out currently. And uh, we'll have to see what Apple comes up with in the future. Take care.